Trauma to the brain often results in death or horrific neurological injuries. More often, however, trauma to the brain results in subtle injuries that may go unnoticed at first and progress slowly over time into an ever-worsening array of symptoms usually involving memory and behavioral changes. These symptoms aren't immediately evident because, in many instances, an initial traumatic event launches a progressive chain of destructive events that may take days, weeks, or even months to advance to the point where symptoms are noticeable. This progression of injuries and symptoms may continue to worsen for months, years, or over the course of a person's entire lifetime. The initiating trauma to the brain does not have to be severe enough to cause a skull fracture or even a minor skin abrasion. The trauma only has to be forceful enough to cause microscopic injuries to the neurons. Each neuron has several dendrites, which carry impulses to the body of the neuron, and one long axon that carries those impulses either to other neurons or to neuroreceptors on other types of tissue cells. Although neurons are very thin and delicate, some neurons are actually the largest nerves in the body because they must span such large distances to communicate with other areas of the brain and body. At the far end of the axons are connections with other neurons or neuroreceptors. These connections are called synapses. Tens of thousands of neurons may fit through an area of the brain with a diameter no larger than the head of a pin. The neuron cell bodies are typically located in areas of the brain that appear darker in color, which are called gray matter. Most axons are covered in white sheaths of tissue that aid in the transmission of nerve impulses. Areas of the brain where these myelinated axons are located appear lighter in color and are referred to as white matter. During trauma to the brain, axons may become torn, twisted, stretched, completely severed, or in some cases, one or more axons may sustain only very subtle injuries. When these various injuries are scattered throughout the brain, they are frequently referred to as Diffuse axonal injuries. Subtle injuries that initiate the delayed onset and progressive worsening of symptoms may begin with a slight disruption of the membrane that covers the axon. This membrane is vital in maintaining the function and survivability of the highly complex organization and function of the axon. Traumatic forces to the brain can result in multiple small tears in the axonal membranes. Smaller tears can sometimes be repaired with few permanent consequences. However, if the tear is not promptly repaired, ions that are critical to normal transference of neurological impulses can flow uncontrollably into the axon. Structures within the highly organized axons, known as mitochondria, are the first line of defense to control the ion influx. If the ion influx is too great for the mitochondria to control, the mitochondria release substances that begin to break down the axon in a process known as apoptosis. The destructive substances break down the cytoskeleton, which is the structural support of the neuron, other organelles, and the cell membrane. 
The breakdown of the cell membrane allows the destructive substances to escape into the extracellular fluid that surrounds all the adjacent neurons. Sometimes the axons are able to heal themselves and restore function. Other times, attempts to heal and restore function result in disorganized aggregations of organelles and cytoskeleton components that form a terminal bulb. Even though axons that have been injured and healed in this way can no longer carry impulses to their previous connections, the chemical and electrical impulses are still received from other cells and transmitted down the axon where chemicals are released at the bulb. These excitatory chemicals are toxic to the adjacent axons. The resulting ongoing destructive process is known as excitotoxicity. The combined effects of the destructive substances released by the injured axons undergoing apoptosis and the destructive properties of excitotoxicity results in increased permeability of nearby axonal membranes to calcium ions. This triggers the repetitive cycle of Entry of ions into the axons, the release of destructive substances from the mitochondria, apoptosis of adjacent cells, the breakdown of axonal sheaths that release destructive substances into the interstitial fluids surrounding adjacent neurons, and the formation of bulbs and excitotoxicity that result in injury to other nearby axons.
As with almost any type of injury or disease process, some people are more susceptible to this process than others. To those that are susceptible, this ongoing, self-perpetuating cycle continues to result in the destruction of large numbers of axons. A single occurrence of trauma to the brain can set in motion the cycle of gradual axonal loss in multiple locations throughout the brain. There may be numerous areas of injuries. Over time, each area may result in the loss of anywhere from a few axons to several thousand at each location. As the progression of axonal destruction continues, so do the neurological deficits and symptoms. As mentioned earlier, tens of thousands of axons can fit through an area of the brain with a diameter no larger than the head of a pin. CTs and most MRIs are incapable of detecting these pinhead-sized lesions. So unless a person suffering from the post-traumatic brain injury process has at least one lesion that involves the destruction of hundreds of thousands of axons in one location, CTs and MRIs are ineffective in diagnosing the condition.